homemade teriyaki sauce is delicious, versatile, and so much healthier than store bought. Why pay for supermarket teriyaki sauce when you can make your own in just five minutes? This is something that, of course, you can find in the shop, but this one has a little bit less sugar, and more importantly, we know exactly what we put in it, so we can control the quality of your ingredients. Why would you need teriyaki sauce in your pantry? Is because it's a great shortcut to a lot of Japanese dishes. So once you have it, there's a lot of things that you can cook with it. With that being said, let's jump right in. First off, a note on the difference between teriyaki sauce and teriyaki glaze. Well, there isn't one, because it's the same thing but reduced down further. The glaze is mostly used for, you guessed it, glazing meat or fish. While the sauce, being thinner, can be used as a dipping sauce, marinade or as a flavoring agent by adding it to cooked rice or in salad dressing. All that while still being able to reduce it down for glazing purposes. The key ingredients for teriyaki sauce are Soy sauce or shoyu. Not all are created equal though. Try to find one that's naturally brewed. The cheapest ones are made through a chemical process, which wouldn't be that bad, but it does come at a significant decrease in flavor. Also using a low sodium version will give you more taste control. Next up we have sake, which is the most known type of rice wine. You can use lower quality sake for this, even cooking sake is fine. Then we have mirin, which is also a type of rice wine, but it has a lower alcoholic percentage and is sweeter than sake. This is due to its higher sugar concentration. If you can't find mirin, you can swap it with some sake, but you need to add one part sugar to every three parts of sake, in order to reach something similar to mirin. Speaking of sugar, that is the last of the key ingredients. Any kind of sugar works, but I like to use dark brown sugar. I prefer it for that caramel hint that molasses adds. You'll find other teriyaki sauce recipes that also call for garlic or ginger, but in order to keep this versatile we're not going to add any. This can be added later if you're making a glaze. The process is pretty simple. In a saucepan add 150 ml or 5 ounces of soy sauce, then 120 ml or 4 ounces of mirin, 120 ml or 4 ounces of sake. And for starters, add 40 grams or 3.5 tablespoons of dark brown sugar. We'll taste it and decide if you want to add more sugar later. These quantities are tailored to the maximum amount of soy sauce I had on hand. But what you need to know is the ratios. That is 5 part soy sauce, 4 part mirin, 4 part sake and 1 part sugar. Now place the saucepan on low medium heat and heat it up while stirring for a total of 3 to 4 minutes. Two minutes into heating it, taste it for sweetness. This is one of those two taste situations. If it feels like it has no sweetness to it, then add more sugar. I decided to add an additional 40 grams to mine. That's because dark brown sugar isn't as sweet as regular sugar. Now, as I said in the beginning, we want this to remain pretty liquid. We're not trying to bring it to a boil. Rather, dissolve all the sugar and marry all the flavors together. We're not making a teriyaki glaze. Once done, transfer it in a glass bottle of choice, preferably something with a narrow opening for easier pouring. Store it in the fridge after it cools off. It should last for a very long time. That's the benefit of not using garlic or ginger in it. You could even store it in the pantry, but better play it safe and keep it in the fridge. And as an example of how we can use this teriyaki sauce, next week we'll be making teriyaki salmon with a sweet, spicy and tangy mango salsa on top. So make sure to subscribe and turn the notification bell on, so that you know when that recipe goes up. With that being said, thanks for sticking until the end, and see you next time, this is Solazar signing off. Bye!